And with our new series of Ruth Garden Commissions, we asked each artist in, in the series, starting with Imran Qureshi two years ago, and Dan Graham last year, and this year Pierre, to address the site in its specificity, in a way, in its site specificity, to look at this um, space in, in its presence um, as a site on top of a museum that houses some 5,000 years of art history in as a kind of walled garden within a fabulous central park um, with an extraordinary skyline of uh, the city behind us. And Pierre took us quite literally in a way on our, on our word and uncovered resources that we never knew were here. Um, arrayed in the site are various events as Pierre likes to call them. Moments that are all woven together by a slow leak of water that seems to come from the aquarium with its living system and connects like a circulatory system the entire site. So traveling from here, from this boulder of Manhattan schist, it's Manhattan bedrock, something that has been taken out of the city's um, grat terrain. It's a boulder we found um, locally. Um, traveling to spaces with underneath the museum's granite tiles, and the granite that is here comes from New Hampshire, and, and lifting it up exposes a strange terrain of earth, concrete, pebbles, and other materials, including roots from the wisteria that grows here, and opportunistic seeds that are beginning to sprout, as well as remnants of past exhibitions up here. Um, you see some blood red paint that's leached down between the tiles that's become exposed. It escaped our sandblasting two years ago when we removed Imran's work from the terrace. Um, and of course, it's preserved in the cracks between. There were, when we first pulled up the tiles, even still evergreen leaves of ivy from Dan Graham's hedgerows last year. And we even discovered some bungee cords left over from big bamboo that had fallen between the cracks. There are old museum buttons. You may remember with fondness those metal tabs that we used to wear here um, to show that we've paid admission. And then inside the aquarium itself floats rather extraordinarily a boulder of featherstone. It's a volcanic rock that has air pockets inside of it. And unlike this boulder here, which weighs over a ton, that boulder floats rather magically or rather actually scientifically because of the air in it. It weighs about 500 pounds, but it's suspended in water with no help other than the differentiation in mass between, between water and itself. Living around and inside the aquarium are two species of aquatic life, both of them ancient. Um, there are tadpole shrimp. Their Latin name is um, Triops cancriformis. Triops means three eyes looks like they have three eyes. Um, they are tadpole shrimp. They look like horseshoe crabs. And they have not changed their form in over 220 million years. There are fossils that exist that are that old that show them in the same shape. Also living in there are American brook lampreys. Those are um, come from upstate New York. They are also ancient species, living fossils, who um, preserve some kind of form that is much, much older than us, of course. And I think part of this exhibition is about a history that extends far beyond our imagination into something very distant in time. And the layers and strata are both recent and ancient. Um, and our presence on this earth, in a way, is only a fraction of what we see here. I encourage you, as Sheena did, to look very closely at the site, to ask yourself what it is you're seeing, whether your short's still there. Um, and in fact, the kind of fleeting views one gets of the aquarium, the way in which its glass flickers according to a, a programmed pulse, is in a way meant to force us to spend more time at and finding our way around and looking very deeply um, at what might be uncovered below.